and this is the library. And we've got the entrance, it's right over here. If you're here after hours, you have to scan your Hornet ID card to get in the building. They have 24-7 learning commons for you, and I have taken advantage of that at times, working at studying with friends, working on group projects, or working on um, like tutoring students. I also spent time here during the summer working for ACES, which is the tutoring program that we have. And so you can get a lot of the library and it's great that the school has this resource available for us for working together and collaborating and giving us a common place to go when we have to study together or work on stuff. And it's right across from Plum Hall. And this is Plum Hall. I have some classes in Plum Hall, but most of my time in Plum is spent at work. I work at the Student Advising Center and we help incoming freshmen and transfer students figure out their classes and get enrolled. And so this is actually the back entrance to one of the back entrances to Plum and it will take you to the ground floor. The Student Advising Center is actually on the first floor, room 106. You've got your fire escape just in case anything happens. And this is like the main building of campus. It's the face of Emporia, where like on t-shirts and stuff, you will have the image of Plum Hall. And there's offices in there. It's where the president's office is, the provost um, payroll is in there. And you got trash cans, but those aren't important. And so it will wrap around to the front of Plum Hall. So if you turn right and go up the stairs, you will end up at the front of Plum. And so if you stand in front of Plum, you can actually see Commercial Street, which is the main street of campus of Emporia. And you can see the fountain that they just renovated. And the library is past those weeds. And the front of Plum. And then the office is actually right in front. And so I spend a lot of time in Plum Hall. And this is Wooster Lake. there are fish in this lake. You cannot fish in the lake though. And you wouldn't really want to fish in the lake. Everyone jokes that there's radioactive fish in Rooster and that like they've seen double-headed fish and that there's monsters living in there and it's just a place you do not really want to eat the fish from or either enter the water. Like, you're not supposed to swim. One year there were actually people who did swim in Wooster, and then they ended up getting early sick. So, you may want to make sure that you stay where you're supposed to, and not to get in the water or fish from the lake. And this also, around Wooster, leads you to the back of Memorial Union, where you can uh, go upstairs to the cafeteria and have breakfast or lunch or dinner if you're on a meal plan and there's not a lot downstairs but then you've got upstairs where all the main activities are and there's the bookstore and then there's Rooster Bridge which we will go on if you keep walking we'll take a right turn instead of going to the Union We'll turn onto Wooster Bridge. And they're working on getting the 
patio for being and worked on. So this is Wooster Bridge. At night, it does light up. And you've got a small fountain on the other side. And when you cross Wooster Bridge like this, it will take you to Morse Complex, which is the upperclassmen residence halls. So we're at the end of the bridge and you have a slight incline and you're at the Morse Complex. And you've got a sand volleyball court and an entrance. And then it also will take, it's actually the back of the Morse Complex. And so you can come hang out, sit down, enjoy the nice breeze, or just just go to class. Welcome to Welsh Stadium. Here is where we have our home football games and track meets. Over there is where the parents and the, um, the fancy people get to sit with the seat backs and then the bleachers. And then we actually, it was renovated this summer, so we actually have a new track and new field. And here is the student section. The students in the band will sit over here on this side of the field. And then back in the corner, you'll have the other team. And then there's the scoreboard, which is pretty nice. It's pretty new considering how old it is. And you've got the stadium lights, and you've got the hyper building is right next to it, and there, the football center. And you've got the entrance to the football stadium in case you aren't coming with the game and then you've got underneath the stands and there are if you go around like if you're in the stands there are ways to get back to the ground level where we are right now and these gates will get you entrance to the track they're usually locked it's usually for team members and everything and football players to get out on the field without having to do a lot here are the sidelines where the football team would be and some football depths. This is the memorial for fallen educators. On these you can see teachers who have lost their lives in the line of duty. And the board of educators. And then they have flowers planted around. And then if you go up the steps, it will lead you toward the one room schoolhouse. And you can see the donors for the memorial. You can go up the steps to the one room schoolhouse. Inside, they actually have it where it looks like it would have been during that time and there's a path that walks all the way around the one room schoolhouse there's a swing set that you can swing on and then these posts if it was back in the days where we had one room schoolhouses um, the post would act as a fence and to where you can tie up your horses uh, when you ride to class. And then the sidewalk brings you to the back of the schoolhouse.